I followed my dreams and opened an antique store to have adventures and spend time as a family. Sometimes you have to climb a mountain and open some new doors to find the treasures inside. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey, good morning, everyone. So today I went to an estate sale and I picked up some stuff. Um, not sure what I bought. I know I bought some watches, but I haven't been through the bag yet. So um, fellow was a collector and um, had passed away, sadly, and we ended up um, buying some stuff that was out at the sale. But I saw a bag full of watches um, and I thought, well, heck, I'll take a chance on them. So we're going to go through the watches and see what there is. And in the spur of the moment like that, you kind of take your chances sometimes. And what caught my eye with this lot was um, th I saw an old Seiko um, automatic watch, like a, a dive style watch. And I thought, okay, well, if there's some automatic uh, wristwatches in there, maybe there's some other good stuff. So um, <laughs> we'll go through the bag. Um, this is the bag in question. I have no idea if these are working watches or parts watches, but we'll go through and uh, see what there is. So let's uh, dig in. Okay, well, this is the bag. There was a couple other things too, which we'll go through in a minute here, but. This is the main bag that I wanted to sort through. And the one that caught my eye, kind of in the moment, was this. Um, that's a Seiko uh, dive watch with a Pepsi dial on it. So uh, I don't know if it's working or not. Actually, looks like the second hand's moving, so that's already kind of a good sign. But we're gonna go through all these. I'm gonna dump them out on the counter and see, kind of one by one, what we get here. And I figured I'd take the chance on buying these watches because one of the things I picked up was this World War II boxed Hamilton chronometer. Now, uh, I've had one of these before. This one is missing the glass out of the case, but it's still a really good watch. And anybody who is really into exceptional timepieces like this might have some interesting watches, even if it's a parts bag. So um, yeah, here's hoping that there's something really cool in there. And I guess there's really no great way to get in here other than to start taking pieces out one by one. So the two little, what look like pocket watches that I got, military pocket watches, are not, in fact, what they are, is 10 second timers. They're put up by Elgin uh, during the Second World War and they were used for navigational timing and for other reasons. Uh, sometimes they were used in the Navy or Army. It depends on what they're marked as on the back. But uh, every time the small hand sweeps, it sweeps every 10 seconds. Um, so really cool little piece. And as you can see, in working condition. So that's always a plus too. Let's see, there's a box one here too. This is, yeah, a little silver case pocket watch, probably English, there's another watch in here too. Now this, ladies cocktail watches aren't overly collectible right now, but I can tell this is a solid gold case. So there's value, you hate to talk about, um, you know, value of scrapping a, a nice little watch, so I would never scrap it, but you know, there is actual value in the fact that it's a solid gold case. And let's see, open it up. A stamp in here telling me what carat it is. So this is probably like a 14 or 18 karat case. It's tiny though, not a lot of gold, but it's still gold. So, you know, gotta be excited about that. You know, when you find gold, if I was just digging in my backyard and found a chunk of gold that size, I'd be happy. And this is a little silver, it's a key wound watch. So there's the key. We'll have to wind that one up later and see if it works. Uh, we'll pop the back open on some of these and see what's inside too. Cause sometimes there's interesting little inscriptions. Uh, there's where you wind it on the back. Yeah, it's not a really high-end one, but it is a sil silver case, so that's cool. And it's cool that it has a little uh, box for it too, so that's neat. Let's see what else is in here. Little men's Hamilton. This is called a tank watch wristwatch. That's a men's wristwatch. Nice little watch. And there are still lots of people who collect vintage wristwatches. Um, some of these brands aren't around anymore. You know, a lot of them have Swiss movements. That's 25 jewels. So the more jewels, of course, the, the jewels are the pivot points for um, the gears and, and the pivots inside. So the more jewels, the better the watch. 25 jewel watch would have been a pretty high-end watch. Um, Rolexes, I believe, are around 25 jewels as well. Somebody's probably going to correct me and say they're 27. That's okay. I know they're up there. Um, so sometimes you look at these and you don't really recognize the name, but you can tell if it's 25, 26 jewel automatic, you know, we'll have to get some of these guys working again. Cause it seems like maybe this is a lot that needs repair. Uh, that is a 25 jewel black dial. 
And you can, you probably saw the other video I did where you can actually polish the crystals up and make them look like new again. Um, this watch with a bit of TLC will actually be a nice little watch, mid-century, 1950s. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool piece. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the one out. This is the Seiko that I saw, and it appears to be working, which is good news. Complete, it looks like maybe the bracelet has come loose. So it probably needs a new bracelet. Maybe that's why I was putting the bag because it needed a bracelet. That's a good looking little watch. Um, it's a good size, probably about 42 millimeter. So that's a, that's a good one there. So I'm pretty pretty happy with that. That's a cool piece. I guess I get these things out of the bag, I'll start laying them all out. Um, this is a Gruen Precision, another good watch. You can see the, so, so far I'm kind of striking out on the ones that are working here. I'm gonna set this down and wind it. <laughs> and no, it's not working. I mean, anything can be fixed, but I have a watchmaker that I use and have used for years. Um, they're not too bad. Oh, well, here's here's a good one that makes that whole bag basically worthwhile. This is uh, an Omega automatic, uh, looks like a Seamaster, 1950s Omega. That's a pretty awesome find. Let's see if it's working. Is it going? Yeah, and it works. So it needs a strap, it needs a crystal. Um, but yeah, nice early Omega watch. That's a high-end piece. I'm going to set that kind of in its own little area there. So these are my good watches so far. So I've got a couple that are good. It's kind of a nice one. This is a uh, chronograph, which is always nice. 17 Joule. So the movements inside a chronograph are just stunning. And let's see if it's going to go. Yeah, it's working. So there's another one, nice little, uh, this is called the two register chronograph. Sometimes you see one with a third in the middle, that'd be a triple register chronograph. Um, really good piece though. Okay, well so far I've got three really good watches out of there that appear to be working in just need of some minor repair like cleaning and, and crystals and that. So um, looking pretty good so far. Another little men's watch in here. This one looks to be gold case as well. I think what I'll do is I'll get these all out of the bag and then we'll go through and see which ones are working, which ones aren't. But I'm kind of curious to see if there's any other really good ones in there. That's another, that's a Gruen. This is just a big old, not terribly old, it's Seiko, but it is a stopwatch. Looks like the hands have come off, but it sounds like it's trying to work. So maybe the hands just need to be put back on. I'll set that up to the side. All these watches probably need a little something, which is why they were set aside. And that's okay. Uh, there's another Gruen Precision with calendar and date. So the more complications, complications are the, uh, the, the things that a watch does. So this one tells time, and it tells you the date and the day of the month. So it has some complications, so like a chronograph or a triple date register, things like that. The more complicated, the more valuable. This one's 25 joules, so a decent little 1950s or 60s watch. Hoping there's gonna be another. Yeah, look at this. Another Omega, automatic, and it's working. I didn't have to shake it. It's already going. Another Seamaster. So that's two Omega so far. That's pretty good. That's like super good, actually. Uh, what's this one? Voltaire, 25 Joule automatic, and it's working. Boris, it's um, not quite as high, well, it is actually a pretty high-end brand. They're still around, uh, 17 Joule, so not as high-end as an Omega, but still pretty good watch. So I'm actually pretty happy <laughs> with the find so far. Uh, there's a nice little square face watch, Miramar, 17 Joule. So there's a few in here that aren't bad. Black dial watches people like, just, you know, they're a pretty little watch. Just a pretty handsome watch. What's this one? Spended automatic. Well, automatics are good. I mean, obviously you never have to wind them if you're wearing them regularly. But they're better if they work. Which that one doesn't seem to. Look, another Omega. Wow, that's three so far. Another automatic. This is a black dial Seamaster. That's probably early 1950s. Have the original back on it. Yeah, Seamaster. Original back. And you want to make sure that the crown is original. This one might have been changed at some point. I think the original Seamaster crown would have had the little uh, um, Omega logo on the end. But that's okay. 
I mean, three Omegas. It's not quite like finding Rolexes, but it's pretty darn close. West Clocks, that's just kind of a generic. 17 Jewel. 25 Jewel. We're getting down to the end of the barrel here. Unitex. Sometimes these little watches are military style. That's just a small one. Watches really changed a lot in size over the years too. You know, in the 50s or so, they started to get a little bit bigger. But during World War II in the 40s, that would be an average size for a man's watch. And then they went a little bit bigger and now they're even bigger yet. Some watches are massive that people wear, if they were a watch at all. This is a, um, would have been a half decent watch. It's a calendar date watch um, with alarm, it looks like perhaps. It's got no back on it. Oh, well, maybe one, maybe that's the back. And one last one to go. Kind of just a little generic watch. That's not too bad. Okay, so I've got them sorted out into the ones that don't work and the ones that do. And so far, I found quite a few little gems. The best, of course, being the Omega Seamaster watches that were in with this collection, and they are all working. Uh, now, there's a difference between a watch that works and one that keeps time, so that is yet to be seen. These watches will probably all need some sort of service, but it's a good start, the fact that they are running and attempting to keep time, so we're going to set them all to the, sa uh, the same time and see if they do actually keep appropriate time. Now, even though a bunch of these weren't working, they're still good for parts or repair. Um, there's a couple interesting pocket watches, so all in all, I'm really happy. Um, also got that really neat Hamilton watch that is basically a work of art, the um, chronometer that would have been used on a ship. So really good haul this morning, so I'm pretty excited. So what can appear like junk in a Ziploc bag is definitely worth taking a risk on sometimes. I ended up with a few real gems, including the Omega watches and some others. So uh, I'm going to clean some up. I might put one on my wrist and wear a new watch today. It's always kind of the fun of getting a collection that you might get to pick something out for yourself. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We do videos basically once a week or so. You can check us out on Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y-E-G. We're on Facebook under Curiosity Incorporated. And we have a live store, so you can come and visit us live in person if you're ever in the Edmonton area. So thanks again, guys. We'll see you all soon, and bye for now.